Welcome to World History in the West. This week's topic is the French Revolution. The central question of the week, did the French Revolution truly reflect enlightened ideals or were they simply used by the leaders of the movement to gain further power? Keep this question in mind as we progress through the material of the week. Introduction. Much has been written about the legacy of the French Revolution. The advance of enlightened ideals and domestic factors would propel France into 10 years of horrible war that would transform not only France, but the world. The revolution would also play an integral role in the development of the West, most notably the development of liberalism and democracy. Lecture context. Where, France. When, 1789 to 1799. Lecture topics, pre-revolution France, the causes of the revolution, the stages of the revolution, and the legacy of the revolution. The central question of the week, did the French Revolution truly reflect enlightened ideals, or were they simply used by the leaders of the movement to gain further power? The broader picture. The French Revolution was preceded by the American Revolution and followed by the rise of Napoleon. The Enlightenment and empire building would happen concurrently with the French Revolution. The stages of the French Revolution. The moderate stage took place from 1789 to 1792 and involved the overthrow of the king. The radical stage took place from 1792 to 1794 and involved the execution of the king and queen and the reign of terror. The directory took place between 1794 and 1799. The Napoleonic era was from 1799 to 1815. Pre-Revolution France. Following the reign of Louis XIV, France experienced a series of weak monarchs, most notably Louis XV and Louis XVI. Although well-intentioned, these monarchs contributed to rising financial debt and frustration within the class system of France. The rigid estate system left power in the hands of only a few. This power structure was also known as the ancient regime. The Estates of France. France was divided up into three levels of class or estates. The first estate represented 0.5% of the population and included the clergy. They paid limited taxes. The church also owned vast territories of land across France. The second estate, 1.5% of the population, included the nobility. They had the right to carry arms, no military service was required, and they paid limited taxes. They also had hunting privilege. The third estate, 98% of the population, comprised of everyone else, from the poor to lawyers, doctors, shop owners, skilled and unskilled workers. They paid very high taxes. Causes of the Revolution The causes of the French Revolution developed well in advance and were diverse in nature. The Enlightenment, the American Revolution, the estate system, poor leadership and rising debt, as well as increasing hardships for the French people, were all major factors in the development of the revolution. Cause number one, the Enlightenment. The ideas of the Enlightenment had especially taken root in France. A second wave of enlightened thinkers, known as the philosophe, furthered new ideas on freedom and rights. These included Voltaire, Montesquieu, and Rousseau. Voltaire specifically criticized the power of the church using satire. He was eventually exiled from the country. Montesquieu advocated for the division of power. Rousseau believed rule by general will of the people and developed the slogan, liberty, equality, and fraternity, or brotherhood, which would later become the slogan of the French Revolution. The ideas of the Enlightenment were often discussed in the salons of Paris. A salon is a room in a home for entertaining guests. Women often led the way in organizing these discussions on enlightened ideals. Cause number two, the American Revolution. The American Revolution showed that enlightened ideals were not just theoretical, but could succeed in overthrowing monarchical tyranny. France had aided the Americans in overthrowing their British monarchy. Ironically, this fueled the belief that a revolution could succeed in France and the French could overthrow their own monarch. The British were the arch enemies of the French. The French crown had sent supplies and soldiers to aid the Americans. Marquis de Lafayette was a famous French general who served in America. Cause number three, the estates. 
2% of the French population made all the decisions and lived a life of privilege. Those of the third estate became increasingly frustrated with their concerns not being met. The first and second estates made up two-thirds of the estates general, the French parliament, and always outvoted the third estate. The inability to rise through the class system and the increasing strain of taxation imposed on the third estate eventually proved too much. Cause number four, leadership and debt. Louis XIV was a very bright and capable leader and built the palace at Versailles, although at an enormous expense. His successors were not gifted leaders. They would continue the trend in overspending and living lavishly. The national debt rose to 4 billion livres. 50% of payments on debt were to interest alone, and there was no central bank. Marie Antoinette, the wife of Louis XVI, would spend and spend at Versailles. She was later given the nickname Madame Deficit. Louis XVI was not a horrible person, just not a strong leader, nor did he understand the plight of the average French person. Cause number five, increasing hardships. As debt continued to rise, new taxes and obligations would be imposed on the third estate. In addition, France experienced severe winters and harvest failures from 1787 to 1788. The cost of bread skyrocketed, and the peasants, already angry, were now hungry. The result would be the bread wars. Peasants rioted as a result of increasing costs of bread and lack of supply. This would prove to be the last spark that France needed for revolution. The people had had enough and the solutions proposed by the monarchy proved ineffective. Once again, here are the stages of the revolution. Take a moment to review the time frame for each stage. The moderate stage, 1789 to 1792. The rising crisis caused Louis XVI to recall the Estates General, also known as the French Parliament, for the first time since 1615. However, the Estates General was dominated by the first and second estates who controlled two thirds of the parliament. The votes from the third estate never mattered. The recalling of the Estates General was purely symbolic by Louis XVI. It only served to further anger the third estate. On June 17, 1789, the delegates of the third estate left and declared themselves to be the National Assembly. Members of the National Assembly declared that they would not disband until the king met their demands. This became known as the Tennis Court Oath. The moderate stage continued. On July 14, 1789, the Bastille of Paris was stormed. This historic prison was occupied, prisoners were freed, and then it was torn down brick by brick. The National Assembly created the Declaration of the Rights of Man and also voted to abolish noble privileges. Compulsory church tithing was abolished, which is compulsory donations to the church, the corvée, which is service to the state, tax exemptions, and the estate system were also abolished. Louis XVI was now a constitutional monarch. A constitutional monarch has his or her powers limited by what is prescribed in the constitution. It is interesting to note that at this time, Jews were granted citizenship and slavery was also abolished. It would later be brought back under Napoleon. The radical stage of the revolution from 1792 to 1794. The assembly was dominated by two factions, the Giardins and the Jacobins. A third group, the constitutional monarchs, were losing power. A few questions for the National Assembly. What to do with the king and queen? Continue with the constitutional monarchy, establish a republic, or execute the monarchs? The Giardins and Jacobins reached an agreement to declare all those who opposed the revolution as enemies. The king and the queen were then arrested and brought to Paris. The Giardins saw the revolution as universal, as something that should spread to other countries. They were not as radical as the Jacobins. The Jacobins were radicals led by Maximilien Robespierre. They felt this was only the start of the revolution and further violence was needed to bring about more change. The radical stage of the revolution continued. The second revolution had begun, but new divisions would develop. Battle for control of the assembly was won by the Jacobins who tried, convicted and executed Louis XVI and his wife Marie Antoinette. The Jacobins, led by their leader Maximilien Robespierre, disbanded the assembly 
and establish the Committee of Public Safety. A new constitution would also be created in 1792. The radical stage continued. The terror would commence from September of 1793 to June of 1794. Any opposition or suspicion of dissent would be reported and those found guilty executed by the guillotine. City centers ran with blood as those accused were executed across France. The revolution would finally consume itself when Robespierre was accused of treason and executed. The Directory, 1794 to 1799. This would be a time of relative stability in France led by a centrist Republican government with five directors. A republic is a country without a monarch. These directors were elected by parliament and power was divided between the different branches of government. Stability, success at war and moderation define this era. Napoleon also continued to rise during this time as a successful military commander. The rise of Napoleon, 1799 to 1815. One of the directors, Abi Saez, began to see the need for more authoritative rule in order to further stabilize France. Along with Napoleon's brother, Lucien, and Napoleon himself, the three individuals staged a military coup d'etat to take over France. The successful government takeover resulted in France forming an authoritarian government under First Consul Napoleon Bonaparte. The Legacy of the Revolution Ten years of turmoil would transform France, Europe, and the world. The revolution would result in much bloodshed, but also further development of liberal democracy, equality, and even nationalism. It would set the stage for the 19th century, where new ideas would transform the West.